Welcome back. You're watching Leadership Forum here on AM Live. We're discussing character-driven leadership, and we've had we've had from our panelists this morning. And uh, just before we took a short break, also Mike Eldon mentioned some of the leaders in this country that have passed on so far that had also that nobility of character. And one of them is Dr. Joyce Laboso, who also we had a sporting chance to have her here on the Leadership Forum when she was campaigning to be a governor of Bomet. And this is just uh, to hack back to 2016, and here is what she had to say then when she was looking for that position. Debal, I think that's that's why you hear us talk all the time about this, uh, uh, that that women have some special challenges that would never, you know, a man would never have. Yes. Like the question of uh, uh, somebody coming to dwell on on uh, an issue of where you are married. Mm -hmm. Which politician have you ever had? Man politician. Have you ever had being asked, who is your wife? And, and how is your wife uh, uh, supposed to be impacting on, on, on your, 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 your ability to perform mm -hmm. as a governor? A Joyce government would look like this. First of all, one of the first things that I think Bomet has suffered from is brinkmanship, is a focus on politics rather than on development, is a lack of synergy between the national government and the county government. So one of the first things we would need to address, first of all, is to turn the people's minds and thoughts into, first of all, why did we go for devolution? Remind the people that Kenyans voted overwhelmingly for the constitution of Kenya because one of the first things, or one of the different things that that constitution held for them was that they were all going to be in charge of their own resources, in their own corners, and that there would no longer be a relationship between politics and development of this country. And so, now that money has been taken to the counties, now that there is self-rule to some extent, the question would then become, do the people of Bomet, for example, or to, do Kenyans in general feel that difference? Can Kenyans say, maybe, I don't know, for different counties there will be different amounts, but can they feel the presence of an additional 15 billion or, or, or so in the counties? And so for me, I want to tell the people of Bomet that given the opportunity to be governor, one of the first things I would ensure is that there is equitable distribution of the resources of Bomet. That Bomet is composed of different uh, you know, uh, things that, 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 that the people of Bomet can do. That, first of all, uh, like the other colleagues have said, Bomet is predominantly an agricultural, um, you know, agriculture is the mainstay of that county. And that tea is key in, um, you know, in wealth creation in Bomet. That I would spend a lot of time and energy to look into what can be done about tea so that it becomes, it can change the lives of the people of Bomet because 18 out of the 25 uh, wards are, are, are tea growing areas. So there would be a clear focus on what can be done right from the, you know, the kind of tea that is planted all the way to the marketing and uh, address the issue of what happens in, in Mombasa in the auction because that's part of maybe what also uh, brings a problem in terms of uh, what the earnings from the tea um, is. The secondly, of course, it is, it is dairy. That's why I said agriculture is going to be key to really that whole idea of how do we change the lives? How do we alleviate poverty? Because that is the thing that we are f f fighting for. And even in all that, again, we want to say youth, the youth empowerment is going to be also key. How do we make agriculture to be uh, attractive even to the young people, so that you know there is all this moving to Nairobi and looking for you know uh, white collar jobs can be stopped and they can remain in Bomet and and actually make a decent living from I've said tea, from dairy, from horticulture because those are the things um, and many other things. I, I'm sure many people don't know that uh, Bomet also produces you know the Kienyeji chickens. There is no other county in Kenya that has uh, <laughs> as many Kienyeji chickens as there as we have in Bomet, but how can we make that a viable, you know, you know uh, economic um, activity that can actually, you know, change um, the lives of, uh, of the people of Bomet? The topic then was, if I be 
the governor, if I be the governor, and that was Joyce Laboso making her pitch there during the leadership forum in 2016 when she was contesting for the governorship of Bomet. And we just want now to discuss with our panelists on uh, a lot of issues they've raised as far as uh, the character-driven leadership is concerned. Uh, let's just begin from where we started with Dr. Oliver uh, Kisaka, because also you mentioned the is issue of purpose-driven and reward-based uh, if you may remind me, purpose-driven and reward-based, and then the, your calling this morning was uh, to return to good values. Mike Eldon has mentioned about uh, the initiative that they have right now about uh, trying to shake into place uh, the, the, the national values that, that we have enshrined in the Constitution. Let's just begin from there. Also, while remembering Joyce Laboso, will you really pick her out as one of person who was character-driven when it came to leadership of Bomet? Uh, thank you very much, Dibal. We, we want to thank God for Joyce um, Laboso, um, partly because of some of the things she has said this morning, that to be a, a woman and to have a space in Kenya has been a very difficult journey. And that the women that have stood out and committed themselves to be able to shine within certain spaces, like the political space, they have withstood a lot. Uh, sometimes uh, men have played unfair, uh, even in the very context of electioneering, um, focusing on things that are non-issues at all. And, and when you see a woman like her, who not only went through all those processes and still made it, um, to lead her people, uh, you really want to thank God for the demonstration. One of the things I want to say this morning, I think, will reflect a bit on what Mike Eldon said and what uh, Lee Karuri said. Just the, the fact that good leadership, or rather character, is something you can learn. It would be difficult to get a human being who is 100% perfect. Uh, in fact, when I began working for the National Council of Churches of Kenya in my first six months, I went around the nine regions, mm -hmm. and I was asking the church leaders to rate themselves in terms of uh, character. I was very surprised by the answers. They actually ranged between 15. The highest uh, anybody gave themselves was 45%. And then we began discussing and saying, so how can we work on, on improving this? And I think they were just admitting the reality that a human being is a human being whichever the space you are operating in. The opportunity we have is to choose between the, the side of us that is uh, committed to, to evil and wickedness and forsake it in an attempt to make our society a better society. And so character is something we can learn. And when you look at Joyce, you can see somebody balancing a number of things. She had a family life, she had a, a husband, she had children, she had a political life. Um, and when you look at her academic uh, progression, you see that she worked very hard mm -hmm. to be able to get to, to the very high achievement that she did. So she comes across as somebody making best efforts as a human being to be a good role model, to be a good leader, to be a person who brings benefit to her people. And that's how I would like to, to remember Joyce. I appreciate uh, what she did, what she achieved, and consider it one of the role models that we should be following as we work to become better people. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, also, we had Mary really also espousing the, the issue of corporate values, trustworthiness. Um, we had uh, responsibility, citizenship amongst you know, a raft of others as well. That, you'd actually picked out this morning. If you look at uh, uh, Joyce Laboso, did she embodies, uh, or did she embody some of these attributes that uh, you lifted uh, from your speech? Mm. Unfortunately, I didn't know her or, or read much of her, but I knew she was one of the high performing um, governors. So for that, you know, I, I really would applaud her. And I think almost all the women are, are extremely hardworking. They've brought in a high level of performance in their <coughs> in their work. I think what I'd like to pick on when it comes to corporates or even politics is to go back 
and talk about what I said, that character is a sum total of your life choices. Therefore, even for corporates, the corporate character, as, as Mike called it, is a sum total of the choices, mm -hmm. you know, what they actually do. And um, Wale here said something very interesting, which I think I had referred to previously, but he expanded it further, is that let us not confuse character with reputation. Let's not confuse character with charismatic. They're actually people who are wonderful, charismatic, high reputation, and they do great things. They've achieved something major. You know, we talked about Martin Luther mm. King here off the record, but what was his character per se, which I didn't know, and there's this is book written by his daughter. And perhaps what Mike was saying, when you look at the people of really very good character, who've been quiet, the closet leaders, who actually expose and have these issues of trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, um, caring, and really embody that and show it on an everyday basis. Um, I think that is what we're really talking about, those real deep values or things that come from your heart that shape what you do on an everyday basis. And I think companies are like that. There are some companies that are widely successful, very big companies, doing very well. But what is their ethos? What is their real value inside? How do they treat their people, their customers? How do they care for their people? Because that is what is important. And what I was talking in reference to America and this whole debate, which I hope Kenya doesn't get into and might seem, is this widening gap between the rich and the poor. Mm -hmm. And when you have corporate who go for maximum profit, shareholder value is what is really core. So you're getting away with minimum wages, which was guaranteed in the states, and the unions were very strong. Uh, when you go healthcare was seen as a must. It was part of caring for your employees. Now it's not. Mm -hmm. So when you have organizations, even here we have great companies, that are doing very well on the stock exchange, but what are they really like? Are they good corporate character companies to work for? So that was, I was saying that when we talk about character, mm -hmm. let's move away from the reputation, the charismatic, yes. the people who've achieved, and say, what is it that forms that people experience you and get a good feeling? How do we treat our people at home? Even us as individuals, when we're home, how do we treat our staff? How do we treat the watchmen? How do we treat the waiters mm -hmm. in the hotel? How do we show respect to people? Those are the real ethos of who we are as people. We're not perfect, but do we think about it consciously and continually try to be better people? Because at the end of the day, what you're left with at the, when you die is only your, your, your legacy. It forms who you are, what people, you know, really felt you to be. So that's, that's what mm -mm. I was talking about. And I think, yeah, we can maybe get a, a, a granular with it a bit, the character and the personality, that we bundle this together, yet they're, they're diametrically different. That character uh, is more important for leaders than personality. Because when you're talking about character traits, you know, there are those things that um, are on the inside of a person, more so than the personality traits which are mainly on the outside. But when we look generally and broadly on leadership we cannot try and you know get that dichotomy between character and personality wale you raised this you know um i read a lot practically all of donald trump's books before he became president and if, it's written sorry it goes written. well <laughs> but if you pick those books yeah. they had very very inspiring things yes now, what office did, and this is where we need to be careful, is that the higher you go, mm -hmm. the more scrutiny on character. Yes. So things that nobody would have cared about, mm -hmm. as he was going higher and getting into that office, they became important. So I think we may have fantastic personality, but if it is not balanced, with an equally fantastic character, I think we are setting ourselves and those that love us, we are setting everybody up for a rude shock. Mm -hmm. Because once that promotion comes, you know, it, people now get interested in what you're doing and who you really are. 
So I think we need mm -hmm. to be careful. So sometimes are we also blinded by the fact that uh, you have a very powerful charisma and charm and then you're on the on the podium maybe also you're making you know pitches for uh, you campaigns, you're making actually pitches for you to become a, a president, a governor or whatever position and us, the citizens or the people who wants to vote for you, we don't get to look at you deeply because we are so astounded, you know, by the silver tongue that you do have, the eloquence that, uh, you know, you're showcasing the good charisma, uh, you're a lovable, affable person and we don't get to see the deeper person that is mm -hmm. the real character in you. How then do we, when we're going through the electioneering process, try to look at the personality, but know the person deeper? It's not something people will do for you. It's something you have to yeah. do for yourself. But even us as voters, sometimes we know many unethical things about our leaders. So we are saying we want good character, but when we come to vote, we still vote for them. So it's almost we are saying, yes, we know, but don't get caught. So we also have a split personality because we are saying we want good leaders. Yes. Yet we know all these things that these people do, but when it comes to the voting, we're then, number one, voting the for them. That's the cause of our problems. Yeah. Mm. How so people vote despite knowing what they know. Yeah. So do, do they really vote out of uh, information or they just vote because, yeah, money has been doled out. So it doesn't matter your personality, yeah. uh, it doesn't matter who you are, because you've given money, that's it, let's elect you. Yeah. Then after that, when we have all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, mismanagement of money, misappropriation of money, we are be always belly aching. Yeah, no, there's like a congruity between what we say we value and what we go and do. Yeah. And it's there almost every election, majority. But yeah. Along with that, mm -hmm. people say that um, when Trump says these nasty things, a lot of people relate to it b because, oh, at last there's someone who say what, says what I actually think, think but don't dare say. <laughs> but now that he said it, it makes it more okay for me exactly. to say it. Exactly. And I, I guess that's global now with social media, yes. uh, yeah. including and not least here, yeah. so that we have our most... Um, obnoxious maybe um, politicians and people cheer them because it's entertainment yes. mm -hmm. and Nick Aluri can, can actually tell us because he's been part of this multi-sectoral uh, initiative to fight against corruption uh, you had the conference at the bombers of Kenya mm -hmm. and we salute you for that and trying to also make, make sure we stanch this flow of corruption in this country but it is systemic it is deeper it is more than uh, you know having just people in office it is going down down deeply to the root core values of us as Kenyans that we don't really espouse. And I think this is a, is a very uh, deeper you know, exercise that you have undertaken because it means we cannot just have uh, a, a results uh, you know, at a snap of a finger. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, you know, uh, the multisectoral forum uh, where we are uh, busy trying to shape uh, the future of this nation as far as corruption, uh, good governance and integrity is concerned, yes. has made us learn quite a number of things. We had um, a discussion with the ESCC and uh, they did a survey around the young people, the youth. And the question was that um, around the area of corruption, uh, what is your attitude to corruption? That was a survey they did and they shared mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, a lot of, not in fact it was not a youth, it was a general a survey around Kenyan people. 70% of the Kenyan people said that uh, if they had an opportunity and an office where they could uh, practice corruption for the purposes of gaining money, they would do it. Yet, this person uh, who answered that question in their private lives and in their general day-to-day -day life, they look okay, they look organized, they look like they are pursuing good values, but Inside, when they answered the questionnaire, mm -hmm. which was a, uh, a, a no, no one declared their names, of course, in the survey, it turned out that the inner character of this person mm -hmm. is just a matter of time. If you give this person an opportunity in an office to serve where there are funds, they would uh, steal public funds. And that is very worrying because it shows that uh, uh, this is a concealed person uh, they are hiding who they really are. They look okay until the opportunity arises. And that is when you really know who the person is. And that is why it is important for all of us 
to invest a lot of time preparing people of good values, good character. It's an investment we must be prepared to do as part of the journey of fighting corruption and ensuring that we secure our resources. So it, it, it's a going to be work in progress mm -hmm. and the character is not static. Yes. It can be improved. I would also want to add and say that uh, uh, money has really compromised uh, people's uh, ways of life. It's one of the biggest challenge because it creates a tension between somebody trying to do good, the opportunity for money is there, and they get uh, to change. And uh, we know also that um, uh, it is much easier <coughs> for somebody to be corrupt than not to. Saying no is a much more difficult part of life. Mm -hmm. Saying yes is easier. And you cannot legislate character. That is the other issue. Mm -hmm. You see, character, you cannot legislate. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many laws uh, that you have put around issues. The best way for the future of this nation and the future of pe people is to have the right choices, good values. Because that's why people, when somebody goes to prison and they have served a full term, they come out and continue exactly the same. Despite the punishment locked for 10 years, <coughs> they still have not changed. <coughs> it means that uh, you cannot legislate this person's inner person. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is to find how can we change people uh, and, uh, and uh, not looking at the law as the main, okay, it helps to, to, to deter. But we must now invent other ways of building better people, better leaders, and people who make the right choices for the benefit of our nation. Thank you. Uh, uh, Michael, let us move on because also uh, Lee brought up, up the issue of faith. And uh, he said also faith determines your character in some way. Uh, we can also go back to the Bible where Jesus was asking uh, the disciples, who do people say I am? And we saw they really struggled uh, at some point until uh, I think it's Peter who got it right at, uh, and said, you are the son of God. But who do people say I am? It's the closest people around who can really tell the real value or the real character of Mike Eldon at the end of the day. Where do we have faith in this place of character? And, it, 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 and in this place where we have so many also, uh, many religious persuasions as well. The term I like using, including in relation to me, <clears throat> is spirituality. Yes, spirituality. Um, because that's a generic, it's unbranded. It's not Christian, Hindu, Muslim, Jewish, etc. And <clears throat> spirituality revolves around living spiritual values. And these are in any faith the same. And they're the same as the, the values we've been hearing. They're expressed this way, that way. Um, the Ten Commandments, you have five do's and five don'ts. The Quran has its, the Torah in, in the Jewish faith and so forth. It's not complicated, this business of right and wrong. Um, the, the question is, how do you hold on to, as we've been saying, hold back from doing the wrong thing? And my big hope actually is for this new competency-based curriculum, and we've talked about this before on, on these Friday programs, the values-based education, uh, which um, I had the opportunity to contribute towards the development of, of the curriculum. And we're talking actually about spiritual values. But some people find that too sensitive, delicate, politically this way, that way. And um, so you don't need to spell out this faith, spirituality stuff to infuse it into everything you do and how you behave. Mm. But uh, just to reinforce what everyone has been saying. Yesterday, I, I was talking with um, a, a lady, she's an Ethiopian, and she's introducing a, a coaching program. And she showed me the <clears throat> proposed document, the brochure for it. And it was full of explicitly spiritual statements about God and um, all wonderful stuff. If you're that way inclined, my advice to her was hold on to the essence, but don't spell it out so explicitly for fear of excluding mm -hmm. some people. Uh, and I think, we, um, for me, 
I like to see a soft cell of spirituality rather than a hard cell of faith, never mind um, branded religion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Oliver? Yeah. Which I disagree, but wonderful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think part of the challenge, Dibal, is that uh, the good people, um, how, how do I want to say this? We, we haven't quite accepted what society really is. Reinhold Niebuhr has written a book called Moral Man in Immoral Society. And he has argued basically that uh, human beings uh, are not morally upright. You have got to work hard to become uh, morally upright. And he has said uh, morality decreases as you go from the family unit towards the society. Mm -hmm. Because in the society, the level of competition that exists therein amplifies or magnifies the, the various weaknesses that are less evident within the private spaces. Now what happens is, uh, again, uh, Aristotle uh, identified six political systems and uh, democracy was the worst. Because the rule of the demos is the majority. If you are to put these two together, mm -hmm. you should be surprised that the general public operating in society identifies more with the bad ones <laughs> than with the good ones. And that the good people, uh, like those seated around this table, uh, hardly dream of going into political office. <laughs> uh, the, the kind of dirt, the kind mm -hmm. of uh, struggle that is required to actually uh, convince the people I can assure you, Mike, the public will not, they like you, you are a good person, but they will not think you can do the dirty stuff for them. They want these guys you're, who you're go, preaching to the <laughs> they go box, these guys who go boxing walls around and making we're, messes of themselves. We are more philosopher kings. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we really need to think carefully about how society is constructed. And, and to me, that is what makes initiatives like um, uh, the Responsibility Institute like Citizens Against Corruption, mm -hmm. important. Because it provides this space where people who think more soberly and who think character-wise mm -hmm. can actually come together and, and synergize. And I would like to actually suggest that all the people who meet in this fora should commit themselves to live by certain values consistently wherever they go so that you begin to develop a different character. Sometimes we appear as if we are a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. but, but if we committed ourselves to say there are a thousand people in this country who are identified by these values and we live by those values regardless of where they are, sooner or later we begin to create an alternative approach to life that people can relate to, mm -hmm. that, that media can highlight, that society can experience. Uh, and, and, and hopefully that actually begins to balance out on the things that, that are evil. And faith is critical in this matter because I think what faith does is that it removes the central focus from me as a person and puts that focus on God. It begins to make me accountable to a higher being. That higher being that calls me to see every person as created in God's image and therefore worthy of respect, worthy <coughs> of service, mm -hmm. worthy of, of honor, uh, and <coughs> not misuse. So I think all these things, need to, we need to find a way of balancing them so that they can bring the best out of us. All right.